Okay, guys, so I wanted to ask how you got involved with Into the Storm and what was it that made you want to work <clears> on the project? Like a lot of things, I uh, I sent a self-tape out, which um, it was a nice vindication of doing those self-tapes because you do sort of send out hundreds and then eventually someone says, oh, I'd like you to do it. And I, and I just thought it was a great... Um, I think we're all obsessed with the kind of... Uh, of natural disasters and, and we all especially when we, we're younger we kind of <coughs> are interested in these things but I really like the human story of it the idea that, that people um, a family that is that is struggling to to hold itself together is brought together by this natural disaster and and and, and forced to bond and and, and mend themselves mm. through um, you know the destruction of this town as you say there you've played father and son in the film and what's the state of the relationship at the beginning of the film and how does it progress as we move on um, they're a little bit of a, a fractured family at the beginning. The mother's mm. the mother's di died quite recently, and the father and son are, are estranged. And, and uh, obviously, Trey is a little bit um, more of a comedian, so he's surviving that that a little bit better. Um, you know, it's a day in the life of, and, and that day doesn't start well. And, and when the storm comes, there's a profound need to to find Donny because I think Gary suspects that he's driving him away, um, literally. Um, and that has possibly put him, putting him at risk. So uh, when they when he does finally find him and they, they kind of realise that they've all survived, it's a it's quite a deep emotional moment for father and son. Yeah, they, they, we, we we I think we all worked on we both worked on our what we thought the relationships was before, and then when we finally met out in, in Michigan a week before we started filming, we kind of brought these stories together and and. and you know, talked about where, why we, why we thought these characters were, were struggling mm. with, um, with, with you know, in their own, in their personal relationships. I remember you saying that you thought. I remember doing it, and you saying that you thought that Donnie was always the problem for Gary. That he was the one that he was, he was wor more worried about because um, Trey's a little bit more wild as a, as a young man. And uh, I remember thinking from the stuff I've done, no, you're the problem. You are. Yeah. <laughs> that was the kind of. Uh, so yeah. that helped. Good. Uh, Richard, you play high school teacher uh, Gary Morris. Given the nature of your role, did you look to any particular teachers from your own past for inspiration? Um, weirdly, I, I, I've been asked that question, and I didn't. I don't think I did it consciously, but subconsciously, there was a teacher in my in my high school who was. Uh, I think he was a humanities teacher, but he was also a PE teacher, and he was, you know, he he was kind of physically very capable, and and I think that he has certainly kind of come into my subconscious when creating the role, and. Weirdly enough, I seem to remember him being dressed in pretty much the same gear that we ended up dressing Gary in. Um, but I did speak to a couple of uh, teachers, or one teacher in particular from the Midwest, just to find out about the high school system there and to listen to the accent as well. So. And uh, the film takes place across what can't be more than about six hours, and pretty much in real time. Did you find this limited time period helpful or challenging? Yeah, the movie's not six hours long. Just, just <laughs> so you know. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was something that attracted me to to the work itself. Apart from the the, the good script, was I liked the idea of of not being able to plan too much. That these characters are living on a moment to moment basis, and whatever's being thrown at them. It's very rare in a story that that you don't know how it's going to end, or the characters, you know, are sort of living on that, that sort of edge of reality and uh, I was really interested in that. Yeah, and I think it's a reflection of how, how people, I imagine, will experience natural disasters just moment to moment, you know. Um, and it makes it all the more immediate, the, the action. I gather you did a lot of practical in-camera effects for this movie, so uh, you probably got quite wet, I imagine, <laughs> throughout. I was wondering, was there any point where you thought, God, I wish they'd just done this with CGI? Yeah, I think Richard nearly gave up acting at one point in the tunnel. <laughs> to just he was done. <laughs> um, yeah, we we had we had two weeks in a in a storm drain, just being blasted with with ice cold water and uh, debris. Um, Sarah put an end to the debris after thinking she thought there was a bit of brick in there. Yeah. She was sure that, and then I think there was. <laughs> it's amazing how how raw and frayed your nerves become as well when when you're asked to go back into that tunnel just one last time. But the thing that kept me going was that I would just look over to the guy that was holding the camera yeah. and the camera team who were all in sort of wet weather gear. They were kind of experiencing it at, at, as well as, as we were and, and having to hold their very, very heavy camera. Yeah. Um, and I used to just look at them and go, okay, let's just do it for each other. Let's keep going. <laughs> but if you, if, you were to start, if you were to start a wind fan anywhere near here, we'd yeah, smash crying. the room up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Max, um, was this your first experience of working on a film of this nature with a lot of uh, physical and CGI effects? Yeah, it, it, it was. I mean, I, I've, I've been... Um, I've been in things where there's been some effects, but but it was the first time where there was a, a lot of that's where the storm's going to be and it's going to be a mile wide and um, 
so yeah, that was a, that was a that was a new experience for me. And also, as we were saying, the first time I've really worked with that many practical effects as well, I've been kind of soaked and and drowned and and, and all the things that happen over the course of the film. And Richard, which is more grueling to work with, is it tornadoes or dragons? Um, gosh, I think they're on a par with each other. I'd like to see Into the Storm with the dragon inside the, the tornado, and then that would just be the icing on the cake. That's the, so that's for the second one, so. The second one, yeah, yeah, yeah in, Into the Storm, out of the storm. <laughs> and finally, guys, um, there's some pretty impressive scenes and destruction in, in, in Into the Storm, um, but what sets it out, what sets it apart from other disaster movies like it? I think... Uh, I think we can. You can sometimes be left a little bit cold by just seeing destruction. So I hope. I think what interested all of us in the film was that there is a, a human story and the story of uh, the survival of a family and of um, and, and of the town and uh, the way they people pull together under um, under extreme circumstances. And I think that's what sets it apart. I'd like to think anyway. Yeah, and I think there's a. I think there is a simplicity and a slight innocence to the to the the initial premise of putting together a time capsule whereby people will look back on their lives twenty five years from now mm. to to you know see if they've succeeded in what they wished for on the very day when that may all be taken away from them. Yeah. Chaps, pleasure to speak with you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you very much.